Talk dirty to me. Sticking in its little hole there. Oh, lucky there, boys. Lucky there, boys. She's talking dirty to me. We got us a problem in there. Look at that. that oh, she's not happy. Oh, she's not happy. Oh, baby, look at that. There we go, the big haunch of mama. Ain't your mama haunt? Boy, you come over here to the old box. You gotta sniff the box. Get the box to sniff and see if it wakes you up. There you go. That's a big one. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. Oh, look at that, guys. We're on a walking cooler again. Check it out. So we're here because it's not cooling correctly. It's supposedly about 50 degrees. So the way this one here is laid out, we've got one refrigerant line coming down from the ceiling. It splits to the two different condensers. I noticed it looks like the liquid line is wet. That's usually not a good sign. Yeah, it's cold. Solenoid. I can feel the vibration and that it's warm. So that means our thermostat must be calling. We're in the 30 degree range here. Um, not a good sign if that liquid line is cold like that. Maybe having an issue with uh, refrigerant. Let's go see. Always like to get up here and see if we can see how dirty this is, which we can see it does have some hair on it. That is usually from cardboard boxes getting cut open. Inside here, you can see we got heaters on it because this is a beer cooler. So we will run it down to the low 30s. And then we have to use, usually need a heated defrost to melt the ice off because the natural defrosting doesn't usually work very well because it's too cold. Let's go and find the condenser, which I'm pretty sure it's outside on the ground. Put a little oil on that, probably be nice. Walk-in beer cooler. Not running. Coil's a little dirty. Get inside here, we've got fairly close on time. We've got a green light, so that's good, I guess. Contactor's not pulled in, that's bad, I guess. Bet you our pressure switch is our issue, because that's about the only safety besides a high pressure. Let's go ahead and pop that cover and take a peek, see if it's got voltage on it. Open. Got a pressure issue. Is the solenoid not working or what's going on? Let's see what our suction pressure is and see what we got here. Sight glass looks like it's liquidy in there. That can be deceiving though. Okay, so we know that we've got four pounds area, three, four pounds on the suction side. So we've got ourselves about a hundred and probably 10 pounds there, five, 10 somewhere in a ballpark. Let's go inside. I swear that solenoid valve feels like it's powered. Let's go in there and grab the amp meter and see if it's got any amperage radiating around it. So let's go ahead and put her on amp draw. What we're doing is we're mag the magnetic field is all we're picking up here. When we open up the clamp, that opens it so that it can sense the magnetic field around it. All right, so we put the open clamp and we are getting amperage there. Back out here at the condenser, so. A lot easier than that jump cool pack I was just working on. Wait a minute now. Why right, does it just come on? Let's uh, kill power to this thing because that will kill power to the solenoid in there. Follow that over to the disconnect that I don't see. There we go, walk in cooler, drive cooler. Am I on the wrong one? That's what I'm wondering. Uh, this would suck if I'm on the wrong one. Ah, dude, I'll tell you what, wouldn't that suck if we're on the wrong one again? Because there's a cooler here. So you got beer walk-in cooler, but we got two beer walk-in coolers. I'll tell you what, guys, I think I had a, a lapse in judgment here. This happens sometimes. I mean, you know, when you put things over here that you would figure right there's your drive, let's put that way over here. This is where no logic comes involved. And this is your drive through, walk in, drive through, which that luckily I labeled that here long ago. So theoretically, this is probably the one we actually need. Let's go down here and see what we're, what we're looking at. Cause that's solenoid. Oh goodness gracious. Yep, yeah, we were on the wrong one. All right, so we screwed up on that, huh? Luckily we didn't waste a lot of time on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and open this back up. We're gonna get this thing running again. This is the actual walk-in beer cooler, which is on the middle of the building. 
that is the drive through you know you assume that because it's close to the drive through so luckily we didn't waste too much time but you know what i'll leave it in here because i make mistakes every now and again it happens so we went ahead and shut it down we got this all back together let's go ahead and look in here you can see we've got a catastrophic issue in here and it, this didn't just happen i'm sorry i about guarantee you that freaking valve backers leaking i've seen it time and time again somebody's already put a brass cap on it compressor's nice and hot we already got a jack henry freaking hose there on that which means we probably had a, a, a major issue at one time or another on that sight glass we've seen earlier that it was uh, flashing really bad and pressure wise we ain't got squat on this stupid thing we must have had a major leak we're gonna go ahead and check our high side pressures and if it's that low we may just jump right to nitrogen because there's not a whole lot to work with here and i'm wondering why the pressure switch didn't shut it down I'm wondering was it running in a negative somebody had just replaced that pressure switch it looks like not too horribly long ago that's a pretty shiny hose and the tag is still on it i'm gonna grab the leak detector see if we can find the leak let's go ahead and turn it back on now that's not shutting off is beyond me i guess we're just peeing enough through to make it make it work i'm gonna grab the leak detector see if we can find the leak all right stratus go find the leak you only got 10 less than 10 pounds of pressure to find it maybe asking for a lot Usually it's that stupid cap. Yeah, I don't think we got enough pressure. I mean, it's good, but my gosh, it ain't that good. 10 pounds of pressure, that's that's asking for a lot. But we could, well, even if I try to run it, that's the other thing. Why is the fan, oh, uh, doesn't have a fan cycle, does it? Nope, no fan cycle control. Just got a headmaster right back here in the back left. How's our oil looking? Are we pretty low on that? I can see an oil in there. That's not a good idea, huh? Do we pump it up with nitrogen or do we throw some refrigerant in it and hope for the best? That's one of them judgment calls. So we got eight on suction, 97 on high. I went ahead and bled everything through my yellow all the way up to here. That way there's nothing in the manifold. Closed off my uh, liquid or my uh, yellow line. We're going to go ahead and open it up and equalize both one side to the other. Okay, so we got 85 pounds on it, or at least it looks that way. So we go in this cooler. What happens as we walk through the door? That. So we must have an issue in here somewhere. Yeah, it's getting worse. Talk to me, baby. Is it broke? No, it's working super efficient right now. <laughs> it's not costing you a nickel. But yeah, you're you got another leak somewhere, so we're looking. Let's see if we can narrow it down. Okay. In a contaminated box like this, normally I just air it out and come back at it. Yeah, if we're in this box here and it's getting stupid over here, which tells me it's probably in this vicinity. We may peel back the layers of the potato there. Talk to me. Talk dirty to me. Sticking in its little hole there. Oh, lucky there, boys. Lucky there, boys. She's talking dirty to me. Yep, yep. We got us a problem in there. Look at that. That, oh, she's not happy. Oh, she's not happy. Oh, baby, look at that. There we go, the big haunch of mama. Ain't your mama haunt? Yep. Oh, she ain't happy. Found a leak, boys. At least one of them. Let's make sure this other unit don't have the same issue. Get up here in the old snifferoo. But boy, you come over here to the old box. You gotta sniff the box. Give the box a sniff and see if it wakes you up. There you go. That's a big one. I guarantee that's a big one. But you look at that. My question is, is it leaking right there on that piece? Very good possibility. Okay, we got some blazing hot water here. That should only take a short duration of time to melt because, I mean, this water was hot. That's a Hoover Goobers there. Somebody didn't know how to braise. Holy mackerel, look at that. Hard. Look at that. That is an abomination to the pipe fitters. Man, oh man. All right, so I was thinking we might be in this uh, distributor tube because she started getting a little dumb. But when you come down here to the Burger Pickers R Us, I thought the burger pickers was gonna be a bigger one. 
Let's go ahead and just drench it down with liquid, solid liquid. Oh yeah, right there it is. Worst possible place location you could ask for, right in the freaking distributor tube. Stick it right in your old pooper and just wallow it out a little bit. All right, just like what we did over there when I was an idiot and looked at the wrong one, we're going to come over here and valve that off, which we've already done did. Let's go ahead and kick it on. I've got my manifold shut, which it didn't like that very well, but it'll get over it. So we're gonna go ahead and let this thing pump down to get all that liquid out of there. Can't leave it open because then it might possibly go through the compressor into the refrigerant. I'm trying to save what we got here. Now keep in mind, it's valved off so it's not going to go nowhere, but it is now sending power into that solenoid so that we can relieve that pressure on that the other side of the solenoids. Got the straighter core out of there. Okay, here's that suction port I was talking about. This is where a lot of times the installers will pull vacuum on the system because it's usually isolated from those valves. So what I've been doing, and you kind of see me do it on this last one, I'm gonna try to relieve the pressure off of these because you know, they could be wanting to pull up. So I'm kind of doing is pulling them down and kind of back up. I'm just trying to take the tension out of it because this could really, really, really go bad. It really could. This, these capillary tubes are in horrible shape though. They got a crap load of vegetables in here, which surely is not helping it. I think, boys and girls, that's about as good as you're gonna get it. There's a little spot right there I don't like. I think that's as good as you're gonna get it. Prep is everything. You see those pits and stuff in there? I'm real leery about running any nitrogen. I don't want any extra pressure on this at all. I've already tried to take any stress off this. All I'm gonna do is just get in there. It's gonna get really hot. It's gonna have to get really hot, so, and then uh, nail that turkey. We're just gonna use generic silver solder, 40%. That's what we use and the white paste, which is the blue label stuff. We're going to get in there. We're going to, we're going to paint that baby. I want everything that's to uh, have that flux on it so that hopefully, you know, it cleans it as it melts. All right. So we're just using my rosebud tip. And pretty much I'm going to put most of my heat down here on the bottom. I'm going to hope and pray that we don't uh, start blasting apart because it does. I pulled it off before where we can get it, but it's not a good thing, I'll tell you that. Kind of hitting it from the back and taking it to the front a little bit. I can stay out of that center, I'd rather. Hey right, boys and girls, I think that's it. Worked out a lot better than what I figured. So we're gonna let that naturally cool. We're not gonna get stupid up in that. As far as my TXV, it's not really that hot. Heat rises, so I mean, I'm touching it. You see, that's my bare skin. I got my sprayer here still. It was hot water, but probably ain't so hot no more. Yeah, we'll just keep that cooled down down here at the bottom. Don't look bad for an amateur. We got all the way around for as filthy dirty as it was. I think we got in there pretty decent. All right, I'm being a dirty dog and running through the manifold. I am a hack, guys. Never mind the fact that I've got all the big blue hoses. I, uh, this thing was completely closed uh, other than just taking pressure off of it. All right, 40 some pounds and 90 pounds. I think we got what we need here. Let's go inside, see if we got any leaky leaky. All right, so we're going to stop right there. Looking good. Got the last pressure or the last push all the way down there. Found that off. Not too bad. So we got the turntables here. We can get wickety wickety whack. Look at that. Isn't that nice? I thought I might have overcharged it, but from what I'm seeing, yeah, we're gonna let this run for a little bit. I don't want to overcharge it and have problems here in a month when it starts to get warmer. Looking pretty good so far. 190 area, 13 pounds. It must only had about a half a pound left in it. 
sight glass is staying pretty clean. Well, it was. I see it do that weirdo stuff before. The uh, sight glass down here, looking pretty good. I mean, it should be just a little lower than that, but it'll be all right. Better to have a little extra than none at all. Like I said, we'll recheck that later. Got the terminals up in there. Had to put a little jumper in there because that one they give you doesn't fit right in there. Got the clock set the same way. We have a total of 45 minutes every eight hours, whatever. Get on. There it goes. Pressure should come up and kick on. So we'll go ahead and let it run for a bit, and I think we're about done. All right, let's see where we're at here. Already at 32 degrees. That's good. Everything's running. Looks like everything's picked up. The thermostat was set prior to us doing whatever last time. Everything's back to normal. Well guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Want to see more like it, you know what to do. Later.